Um, but as you can see, we'll dump that here. It actually works and actually goes up the conveyor belt. Look at this. This is incredible. And of course, we only had a thousand liters, so that wasn't much to fill at all. Hello everybody and welcome to Simulate Gaming and welcome to my first look here at the brand new Big Bud DLC. Yes, this thing dropped this morning, so uh, as soon as I woke up I thought I'd come have a play. So I have been playing with this thing for quite a while now and I think I'm finally at the stage where I can show my experience with you guys. So hopefully you learn at least one thing that possibly may be missed from any of the other videos that you've watched today. So with that said, let's jump straight into it. So right in front of us now we have the two brand new Big Bud DLC tractors. So... We have here the Big Bud 747. So this one here is 1100 horsepower. As you can see, the detail on this thing is incredible. So I'm like a little uh, munchkin to next to this thing. So just little things that get me with uh, DLC like this. And one of the things that impressed me the most, and this is going to sound ridiculous to most of you, but to me, I liked it. So um, we've actually got a real grill now. Um, giants usually do like a, a textured grill, which you can't actually see through, but as you can see we're here with the Big Bud, it is an actual see-through mesh grill, which absolutely blew me away a little bit. So on the front of the tractor, we've got the Big Bud ad strip, and we've got two indicators. Now the funny thing is about this, there's nothing on the back, literally just the front, which kind of makes sense, because you know, oncoming traffic and all that lot. Um, we've got the headlights here, I'm assuming one of these is full beam and one of these is normal, but we'll soon find out in a minute. The engine detail is incredible. Now I believe this is Detroit Diesel, I don't know if they've actually branded it as that. Um, I can't see any ad strips or anything on this. Yeah, up here we have the huge air filters, as you can see here. Um, two huge exhaust stacks as well, as you can see you've got the orange pipes going to the exhaust stacks. Now this current model I have here is the dual wheels, which I believe is technically the default. But they do give you a single a single wheeled one as well, and also a triple a triple wheeled one. So I'll show you all of them in a second. So at the back here we have all of our hydraulic hoses and electric hoses, whatever. And we've got the tow hitch here. This thing has no three point, but bearing in mind we do have something for that in a minute. This is one of my favourite features up here. This is a camera. Now remember this in a minute. Now unfortunately it doesn't work, but there is a cool little feature to do with the model. I'll show you that in a minute. We've got our rear work lights here, I believe, and our normal lights just up here. So in the middle here, we have the prop shaft. Now this does spin, which is fantastic. You can see all the animated parts as well. We've got the hydraulic hoses going to all that good stuff. And that's pretty much it for the outside. And what we're going to do real quick is jump up onto the deck. And this ladder does kind of actually work. And on this side as well, it does kind of actually work. You can actually clip your player into it to climb up to the, uh, to the deck here like so. So we jump in, unfortunately there's no doors, but of course this is a mod for consoles as well, so that's kind of understandable. And we are inside finally, so this is the interior. Now I have to admit, this is possibly the best interior I've seen Giants do. Now Giants always do a fantastic job with their modelling, but this just blows it out of the park if I'm honest. Look at this, you've got the door handles and everything, this one obviously is meant to be a brand new one. We've got the hydraulic levers here, we've got the manual shifter there I believe, and uh, we've got a vast range of dials here, and of course the Big Bud steering wheel. Now, when I mentioned about the camera, there it is. We do have the screen for the camera up there, the blue screen. That is for the camera on the back, but unfortunately, like I said, it doesn't work, but it's nice that they've modelled it in anyway. Maybe, possibly, somebody could do a mod for later on. Maybe somehow they can do an attachment for this tractor. I don't know. But, um, yeah, we have the screen at least. Uh, we'll start her up. I'll be quiet so you guys can hear her. I'll start her up on the outside and then go back in and start her up on the inside so you can hear. So, uh, yeah, I'll be quiet and you guys can hear her. Power up. So, there we go. That is her started up on the outside. Now, I did think she'd be a lot louder than that, if I'm honest, because all the videos I've seen on YouTube, they're loud. So, I'll start her up once again, but from the inside so you guys can hear what she sounds like when you're sat inside the cab. So, uh, yeah, I'll be quiet. Pretty much the same thing. But there is the uh, inside filtering. Uh, we'll give the horn a little check so you guys can hear what the horn sounds like. Beefy, beefy horn. Love that. Um, so we turn the lights on here. We've got... Okay, they're not full beams. They're just lights. So we've got the front lights there. Hazard lights and, of course, indicators as well. And uh, if I leave them on a minute... At the back here, if I jump back up, you've got the rear lights here. And once again, these are off because these are our work lights. But there's no indicators on the back, which is strange. Or no hazard lights. So I jump up and put the work lights on here using keypad 6. You can see that these are actually working work lights, which is pretty cool. Now, does this thing have full beam? Let's have a look. I probably should have done this at night time, but there we go. 
Okay, so it does have full beam. If I do control F like that, you can see kind of on the floor, I don't know if it's coming out on video, that it gets brighter and lighter. There's nothing modeled for that, which is absolutely fine because I don't know if this thing actually has stuff like that in real life. There we go, that is a quick overlook at the 747. We will get into more detail in a minute. So quickly we'll look at the Big Bud 450 power shift. This one has 500 horsepower. And this one here, surprisingly, is even more detailed than this one. And I'll show you that in a minute. So unfortunately, there's no customizable extras for this. There's no dual wheels or anything. What you see is what you get with this one. We've got the huge stack sticking out there. We've got the snorkel there. Um, inside the engine, this is one of the things that blew me away when Landed Kid told me last night on TeamSpeak. We've got a lot of detail here on the engine. So we've got the... Um... Okay, so I've turned the cross there off a minute so it doesn't get in the way. We've got a serial number there on the... Uh... On the engine now you can see there it says cummings just underneath the uh, pipes there and we also have the cummings uh, logo there as well cummings uh, diesel power now this makes me think that possibly we're going to see more cummings in the future maybe they'll give us a proper branded american truck at some point but uh but i'm not gonna get my hopes up it could just be that the cummings license came with the big bud because you know that's the engine they have in real life um on this side pretty much the same story so we've got a huge turbo there um, made in the USA, you can see there, we've got a case oil filter, which is interesting. Right at the back here, we've got more hydraulic hoses, we've got another tow hitch there. Once again, this one does not have a three-point, but we do have something, or alternative for that. Uh, we've got our lights here, our standard work lights, which look strangely like a Steiger, if I'm honest. The back of this thing looks a lot like a Steiger. Uh, we've got the big bud ad strip there. Once again, we've got rear lights, as you'd expect. So we'll jump up onto the deck, and we'll take a look inside the cab. This one here is a lot more detailed, and I love it. I think this is my favourite truck throughout the two, and I didn't think it'd be the case. So there we've got a little CV radio there. We've got a normal radio there. We've got a little heater there at the top there. Um, steering wheel is different to that one. Uh, they're kind of similar, but this one doesn't have the big butt ad strip. Similar dials. This one does have some digital elements, which I really, really like. We've got a vast amount of levers and pulleys and stuff in here, which is amazing. And we also have the little computer there for the implements as well. Now this is the mass production one, so you would of course expect tweaks and stuff like this in the real life one. Um, if I start her up, I'll be quiet once again so you can hear this one with the beautiful Cummins engine. Now as this is a mass production Cummins engine, this one starts up pretty much instantly. So I'll give it that once again because I was actually talking, because you know I'm an idiot. And she started straight away, so there's no delay or anything, she's just up and running. Now one really cool thing about this is I've just jumped out there, we're leaving the RPMs pretty high. You can see the fan is spinning there, if I just zoom in on that. Now this is RPM dependable, so the faster we go, the faster the fan goes. So if I quickly make it go back down to idle, you can see she gets slower. And that is the case with the 747 as well. There we go, spinning inside. So if I, uh, I'll tell you what, I'll show you the 450 first of all. So I'll just drive, if I can get a good camera view on this. So keep an eye on the fan there. So she gets a little bit faster, you can see, not too much, but a little bit faster. Of course, it goes faster once again when you're using implements. So you may have seen it quite then. So you may have seen it then, but if I show you this once again, if you look at the prop shaft in the middle of the tractor, it does spin when we're moving, which is fantastic. And I'll show you the lights on this one. So you can see we've got our normal lights there. Once again, same story with the, uh, with the full beams. You can see it getting brighter on the floor, but there's no actual model for that. Does this one have indicators or anything? Yeah, the indicators at the top on this one. And once again, there's nothing at the back. Work lights, all three of them come on, all six of them technically, three on each side. All six of them come on at the same time by pressing keypad six. And keypad five gives us our front work lights. As you can see, they're just hiding on the side there. That's the 450. Now I'll show you the implements real quick if I just get this turned off. Now I'm going to start with the C drill, which doesn't make much sense, but bear with me if I just make us go a little bit faster here. Um, this here, is an absolute beast. So this is the Seed Hawk. Um, what is the capacity of this thing? Let's quickly have a look here. So if we go to shop and we go to sewing machines, so this holds 34,500 litres of seed, which is absolutely incredible. And the front part of this, the actual seeder itself, is 25.6 metres, and it requires 640 horsepower, which let's safely say we got more than enough horsepower here. This one, this big bud here is the 747 we're using to demonstrate this and we have the triple wheels on. Now you can see this thing is a beast. 
Now there's a really cool feature with this, and I'll show you that momentarily, and a couple of people whose video I have seen so I could check out the Big Bud DLC myself, forgot to mention this, and I know this was a thing, so if we jump up, this thing's like a stage actually, you can actually use the, uh, the ladders here to get up to the top. Now as you can see we've got these hatches here, that's obviously the hatches that you put the seeds into, and we also have this conveyor belt on the side. Now a couple of people have said it's just for decoration, but they are unfortunately wrong. Um, if I jump in to the Big Bud real quick, and we select the rear implement here by pressing G. If we press X, this thing actually unfolds and the, the conveyor belt comes out. The auger pipe, the conveyor belt, whatever you want to call it, comes out. It goes directly into this hatch here. So you put your seeds into this part here. Uh, I, as you can see, I've got a wheel loader waiting here with a pallet. Now you're going to need probably about 20 pallets or more to fill this thing up. Uh, these pallets, of course, only hold... Well, actually... Yeah, we're going to need a lot more. I, I forgot how much I said the capacity was, but these only hold a thousand. So yes, we're going to need a lot more, unfortunately. Um, but as you can see, we'll dump that here. It actually works and actually goes up the conveyor belt. Look at this. This is incredible. And of course, we only had a thousand litres, so that wasn't much to fill at all. So let's get this out of the way. So I have prepared something just on the other side here. I've got a placeable uh, seed silo there. So we'll jump in to the big bud and we'll get it filled up. Um, we could probably get this folded away now because we're not actually using it. So whilst that fills up, it's going to take a while. We'll move on to our next implement. So we will come back to the Seed Hawk in a minute. But uh, while she fills up, we'll move on to our next implement. Okay, once again, we are back at another field. We have another 747. Don't worry, I'm not just using 747s. There's a reason we've got this with the triple wheels. So this here is the plow. This thing is a beast. I'll just show you this in the store. You can see we've got... Uh, so this is the Gregory Besson, I hope I'm saying that correctly, Gregory Besson SPSL9, it's 130,000 US dollars. The working width is 10.5 meters and it requires 550 horsepower to pull this. Now this little thing here comes with it, this once again is the same brand, it's the Gregory Besson Trailed Lifter and it's $15,000. Personally I think this should be under miscellaneous but of course you need it to run the plow so it kind of makes sense that it's in here as well. Now this basically allows you to have any three-point implement on the back of the Big Bud. So you trail this behind and then you put the three-point on here. And then I have manual attach enabled right now, so I can go ahead and do that. Like so and show you that. Now just to prove, I've got something ridiculous here to show you. So just to prove that you can have literally anything attached to this thing, if we go to our map and go to this Big Bud here, we'll enter it. I have the smallest fertilizer spreader in the game attached. So we got the Kermedaland, um I hope I said that correctly. I think it's how you say it. Can I Canaveland? Canaveland? I don't know. But we've got the smallest spreader attached to this, and you can use it with that if you want. Um, there's no PTO shaft, which is strange, so I don't think you're actually meant to be able to use this properly, realistically, but you can use it if you want, so we go ahead and uh, start her up. As you can see, she works. Once again, no PTO shaft, so I'm not sure how she works, but, but you can use it if you want. That's just a demonstration, so I'll jump back to the, the plow real quick. Okay, so we'll boot up the Beastie 747 right here. We'll quickly do a little strip here with this plow. So we'll get her unfolded. She's going the wrong way. So we'll wait for her to unfold and then we'll flip her over. She is double-sided. Now, one thing I should mention about this plow that I just forgot. You can actually change the type of slats you have. So I've got the, the new ones, basically. This is the plow with slats, but you can have the normal ones as well. So the other ones are a solid piece of metal, and these ones here are obviously slatted. So they, all it does in real life is break the dirt up and uh, makes it a bit finer if you've got like chunks of dirt or rocks or whatever. Let's the rocks pass through. So we'll get this uh, plow turned over first of all. She's a beast. She takes a while to go. Okay, so we've got to flip around the right way now. We've lowered her, and we'll make her start plowing this field away like so. You have to move left a little bit. I'm sort of missing some. But seriously, guys, look at the working width on this. This is crazy. I'm still missing quite a lot. It's because I'm trying to move the camera around. But you have to zoom right out to see the whole thing of this. And um, once again, I'm not trying to do a neat job. I'm just literally showing you the working width. Huge. So that's 10.5 meters. Shouldn't take too long to do your huge American or North American maps or your European maps or whatever with this thing. So yeah, that's the uh, the 10 meter plow. I'm just going to get the big bud turned off real quick. There we go. And we'll move on to our next implement. Okay, so we are now over with the Big Bud 450, and we have all three cultivators available in the game. Now, we have a vast amount of options here. So we've got this bad boy, which is the Bednar 
Where's the model number? I don't actually know these numbers just yet, but this is the Bednar Swifter SM18000. So we'll quickly have a look at this bad boy. So this is $120,000 as a working width of 18.2 meters and requires 500 horsepower to pull. We'll get her unfolded in a minute so you can see the actual working width. And it has a built-in uh, weight, which is pretty cool. And now this one here is probably the most interesting one in the pack for me because I play a lot of British maps and this kind of would go on a British map. You need quite a lot to pull it. And this is the Agrisem Cultiplow. Now, as you can tell by the name, this is a cultivator and a plow in one. So if we jump up here, you can see we've got these uh, subsoilers or chisel plows, whatever you want to call them. And that's at the front and at the back, we have the, the disc cultivator here. So yeah, this will basically plow and cultivate at the same time. Um, I'll quickly show you what she looks like in the store. So you can see she's 82,000 US dollars. She has a working width of 8 meters and requires 420 horsepower for that. Now this one here looks like something out of saw. This is the FlexiCoil ST820. Now this thing is 24 meters working width. I'll just show you how much she is. So she is 186,000 pounds. There we go, 24 meters and uh, 500 required horsepower. Um, I'll get these all unfolded now so you can see. Uh, I'm not going to use any of them, but I will just unfold them so you guys can see. So we'll start off with the Coty Plow, my favourite one of the pack. The smallest, but my favourite. So we'll just quickly hook her up like so. Do we have her? No, we missed her. Fantastic. Well done, Simulate. Back up. There we go. So we've got her attached now. We'll get it unfolded. Alright, so as we drop her down, as you can see, we are... It looks It's giving out the cultivated texture, but of course it will register as ploughed at the same time. So this thing is fantastic. And I can see this being used on a British map. If you don't use the Big Bud, maybe you can use the Tracked Challenger. I think that thing will pull this thing with no issues whatsoever. So yeah, that's the first one. What we're going to do real quick is get it disconnected here using manual attach. And uh, we'll connect up the... What one do we get first? So what, we'll get the yellow one first. Get this unfolded, because I've not actually unfolded this one just yet. So this is going to be a first for me as well. There we go. Get it hooked up. We'll move her out the way. In fact, we'll just start unfolding her now. By the time she gets unfolded, we'll be out the way of the, uh, the flexi coil. Look at the size of her. Now this thing automatically... This big bud now looks tiny, basically. Um, if we drop her down, you can see the working width is very, very reasonable. I wouldn't complain about the working width, but surprisingly, that isn't the biggest one. It blows my mind that we've got the other one as well. So that's that one working away there. You can see the difference in the working width compared to the uh, Colty Plow there. And finally, we'll get the uh, Flexi Coil attached. The ST, what was it, 820, I think it was? We'll get this hooked up and we'll get her unfolded so you guys can see. Now, I have been using this one off camera to get this the fields ready for this video sort of thing. So we'll back up here, get her hooked up, and we'll get her unfolded as well. We'll head to the edge of the field and... Uh, We'll see what the working width on this bad boy is like. So once again, 24 meters in one go. So even the biggest American maps probably won't take that long to cultivate. There we go, especially if you have two tractors running them. Look at the size of this. And as you can see, if I uh, just go up into the sky real... If I just go up to the sky real quick, you can see here that we've got all the different working widths of the cultivators available here. And... That one there, I'm still blown away by this one here. This one is huge. Probably not ever going to use it on the British map. But um, it's going to be nice when we do the American stuff, that's for sure. So that's that. So we'll move on to our next section. Okay, now the next category we have is seed drills. Now, I know we just looked at the seed hawk a minute ago, so we will go back to that one. But until then, we'll uh, demonstrate these ones. So this one here is going to be a bit hard to pronounce, so we'll give it a go. This is the Hatson... Buckler. Hudson Buckler? Something like that. I've, I have no idea, but there we go. This is the Terminator TH18, and this here is the actual seed part of it, the actual drill, if you like. And this here is just the tank for it, essentially. Once again, we do have another auger pipe here. This one is not a conveyor, this is just an auger pipe. Um, so that's how you fill this one up. Now, I want you to pay attention to this if you haven't seen the Big Bud pack just yet. These hoses here are just folded over, they go nowhere because you've got the ends of them here. Now pay attention to this, because this is incredible. Um, hopefully this is going to be a feature in FS19. The fact that Giants are putting it in now makes me think that we will be seeing this in FS19 when it's out. And it's dynamic hoses sort of thing. Now we have mods, some mods out that already do it. But um, the fact that it's in 17 is even better. So we'll get the tank hooked up first of all. I was going too fast then and looking at the other screen. Well done, sir. So we'll get this hooked up. There we go. Pull this forward. 
And we'll reverse out here. Oh, there we go. Aim as best as we can. Right, so the icon's showing up there, but we're not going to bother connecting her up just yet, because I want to get the big bud turned off in a minute. Um, I want to show you guys the dynamic hoses. So as you can see on the actual seed drill part itself, this looks like we have some sort of turret guns, but they're not, I promise you. If we press attach, you see these yellow hoses will connect into the proper holes and they'll be dynamic, basically, so they'll be attached properly. So we'll press Q, and as you can see, the hoses do attach, and this is probably the most fascinating thing for me in the whole pack. The fact that we may be getting dynamic hoses in FS19 is incredible. Now, I am, I'm not going to do any seed drilling, but... Um, We'll quickly see if this front tank can get unfolded like you can on the other one. Yep, you see the auger pipe is moving out there. We'll use the uh, ladder to get up and have a proper look here. So yeah, as we'd expect, and this thing's actually got seeds in. Hmm, interesting. I don't remember filling this up. I may have done. <laughs> but yeah, as we can see, we've got the auger pipe here. Um, so you can, once again, dump the pilots into here and they get shot up into the tank. Um, we do actually have seeds in there. Cool, I didn't realise we did. So once again, I'm not going to do any seed drilling per se, but we'll get her unfolded so we can have a look at her and see how big she is. So this here, if I get up the sewing machines in the store, this one here is a working width of 18 meters, requires 450 horsepower to pull, and the seeds that it accepts are wheat, barley, canola, soybeans, oilseed radish, and grass. And it does fertilize at the same time as you guys may have saw when we were setting it. So the pipes go all the way along, and then you can see them disperse all the way across this machine. This is, a, once again, we are another beast. Everything in this pack is a beast, guys. The big bud is meant to be beastie. So you can see, that's not really a stingy seed drill right there. So if you want to get some things seeded up, this may be the one for you. you now, the tank blows me away. It's huge. And once again, just for fun, I'm going to play around with the pipes. Woohoo! Love it. I absolutely love that. So we'll get this disconnected. Uh, we've got the auger pipe put back in. Okay, so whilst we're here, we'll jump over back into the big bud and we'll hook up the Great Plains one. Now... Anybody that may have watched my early videos on GoCrest, you may have saw that I talked about Great Plains because we had, in fact, I'll just show you here. If we go to sew, uh, sewing machines, we have this Great Plains one here. Now, I said it's a bit suspicious that they've given us a brand new brand in game and it's so small. Uh, so I had a hunch that we may be seeing more Great Plains in the game. And here we are. We got this huge thing as well. So we'll get it hooked up. We'll get it unfolded. I don't think there's much gimmicks to this one. It's just a good old hardcore uh, seed drill. So we'll get her unfolded. So this one here you fill as you'd expect uh, like you did usually. So for some reason she's moving. There we go. So we do have ridge markers on this one as well. So if you want to do some ridge marking there you go. Uh, do the other side as well. So to fill this one up you just use a tally handler or front loader or wheel loader as you would do the originally. So press N to, uh, to open up the hatch there. You can see it opens. Uh, okay we'll jump up. Can we jump up? There we go. So yeah, that's where you put the seeds. I'll just double check with it. Does this one fertilize? I don't think this one fertilizes. It's just a hardcore seeder. But there we go. That's the Great Plains there. And uh, the one that I can't pronounce. I'll give it another go. Let's give it another go. Shall we? The Hatzenbach Bichler. I don't know. It's Austrian. There we go. It's Austrian Agrotechnik. So I'm going to go with Hatzenbichler. That's what I'm going to go with anyway. Um, so we'll get this big bud turned off, and we want to tab back through and see how the uh, the big one's getting on. Okay, so the Seed Hawk is completely full now. This thing is a beast. Now, this one here is also customizable, so I have dual wheels on the very back of this. You can have single wheels if you please. Okay, so the conveyor belt is put in, and uh, the flaps are closed. So we'll get this to the nearest field, and uh, we'll get her unfolded and see how big she is. So I'll show you the prices and stuff in a minute. Oh, we're going to get stuck on my, uh, my pipe. My uh, seed tank here. So we'll get the seed tank sold up real quick. There we go. Just so we can get past easily. So do we have a field to go to? Probably not. I'll tell you what. We'll go here because then this will take us to our next item. So ignore the combine. The combine is obviously just the in-game combine. That's the wrong one simulate. Switch to the front. You do have to change between the front and the rear. You're pressing G if you want to change which implement you're unfolding. Because if you do X on the back, you'll get the, uh, the conveyor belt out. But yeah, we'll do the seed drill real quick. And whilst that is unfolding, we will show you the worker mix. So it's 25.6 worker meters requ requires 640. I may have already showed you this, but the seeds it takes are wheat, barley, canola, soybeans, oil seed radish, and grass once again. So this one here is, uh, you're not going to be refilling this anytime soon, that's for sure. Once you get this uh, filled up 
If you get this 100% full, I think that will probably last you pretty much the whole playthrough of your map, if I'm honest. Um, absolutely incredible sea tank on that. So once again, we're not going to use it. I'll let you guys be the uh, ones to do that. Now, if we move over here, I'll switch to 8 times walking speed. Back with another 450, and these here are the auger wagons, or the auger trailers, whatever you want to call them. Now, this is the same one. It comes in two colours. It comes in red and green, and the customised of extras of, is also the wheels. So, you can have it with tracks, or you can have it with wheels. So, I personally prefer the wheels. I'm not sure why, but um, you don't have to have the tracks on the red. You can have the green one with tracks, or the red one with wheels, whatever you want. So, let's go ahead and get the Edy Mini Mario Mo. We'll get the green one hooked up. There we go. Get the big bud turned on here. Right, let's get it hooked up, like so. We'll drive forward, we'll get the cover off. And as you can see, she's pretty standard, but we'll get the pipe unfolded right there. And uh, we'll unload the combine into her. And whilst that is unloading, I'll show you all the uh, store details for this. So we have all the lights and stuff, as you expect. So we've got the uh, hazard lights, the rear lights, and that's pretty much it, to be fair. The other ones are reflectors. But, um, is this going to fit under here? That is the question. Should do. There we go. So unload some barley. And whilst that is unloading, I will show you the, uh, the details. So you can see, this is the Brent Avalanche 1596. It's $118,000 to buy. It is $190 a day upkeep. It holds 53,000 litres. That is crazy. And uh, that's pretty much it. It's just an auger wagon. And then you can go put it into... Whoa, what is going on here? So you could pretty much do the whole harvest with this one thing, I reckon. You could put a semi-truck on the side of the field and just keep dumping into there. So we've unloaded... The combine was 100% and it's only filled up this thing at 26%. So infinite amount of uh, storage on that if you want it. Now moving on to our next one. This thing here is an absolute monster. And I'll show you this right now. We've been recording for quite a long time, but there's a lot to get through. This here is a manure spreader, believe it or not. Some people said it was a tipper, but it's not. It is a 50 foot, or 50 ton, sorry, I'm not talking about foot. 50 ton manure spreader. You can see it's been filling up as we're waiting. So we'll get into the big bud. This is the big bud, by the way, with the single wheels. I kind of like it, you know? I kind of like the single wheels. Um, now, obviously, Giants will give us that so we can put it onto smaller maps and get through the gates and stuff. But we'll get this bad boy started up here. As you can see, it holds when it switches back to the actual... Uh, capacity. So this thing here holds 70,000 litres of manure. That is crazy, guys. Absolutely crazy. Um, so if we go to... Do we own this field? I don't know if we own this field, but we'll have a go anyway. So I'll quickly show you the uh, the deets. So this here is the... I didn't even say that. The Brochard? The Brockard? EV2200-120WR. That's a bit of a mouthful. You won't be saying that in a conversation anytime soon. It's $198,000 to buy. That's quite expensive. You can get a tractor for that. It has a spreading width of 15 meters. Uh, once again, I just said it holds 70,000 liters. It requires a 500 horsepower to pull this thing when it's full. And the daily upkeep is $240 a day. So we'll get her unfolded. You can see the door lifts up there. And uh, we'll get it booted up. And she's pretty much just a manure spreader, but with an incredible capacity. So once you get this thing filled up, you will easily, easily be able to do the whole field, I reckon. Um, you probably get away with using the... Um, probably get away with using the other Big Bud, the 450 with this, I reckon. Or was it 420? Well, you get the smaller Big Bud. You probably get away with using the smaller Big Bud with this, if we're honest. You don't really need the 747 for this. But as you can see, it is going on really, really slowly. So we've got 95% left still. So yeah, I don't think you're going to need to fill this up anytime soon. You might be able to do the whole field, depending on the size of the field, of course. But there we go. That is the manure spreader. Uh, moving on once again, we'll get the Big Bud turned off. We'll see what we have left. Okay, so we're pretty much done. I think I've showed you everything. Now, if I have forgotten something, please tell me in the comment section. But there's one more thing I want to show you because you may not be able to actually get a grasp for the size. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll get this if I can get on the other side of it. We'll get this. Uh, we'll get this trailer disconnected here, like so. We'll get in to the big bird. What is this? This is the 450, and we'll uh, swing her around. And I want to go and give you guys a size comparison compared to the tractors that we used to have in game. So um, what I'm going to do is head down this way, slowly but surely. Now this thing here is 19 miles an hour tops, and I think the other big bud might be the same, possibly. I'm pretty sure it's the same. They're all about 20 miles an hour, put it that way. Um, 
but we're just going to put the 450 on our little line up here. So what I've done is got all the big tractors in quotation marks, the biggest tractors in game originally, and we'll just park this in the middle right here. There we go. Get it turned off. Now, if I quickly jump up into the sky, so as you can see, these were the biggest tractors in game. So hopefully now you have a grasp on how big this thing actually is. So the big bud, you may think it's big. You may think it's similar to the Challenger. There we go. We have the Challenger with the triple wheels on. And there is the big bud with the triple wheels on. So as you can see, there's a huge size difference there. And we've got the 450 in between there. So you may have thought the 450 was tiny because it was parked up next to the other big bud a minute ago. But no. That is the T9, and that is the 450, guys. That is how big it is. I, it's, I'm still trying to get my head around it, because I literally thought this was small. I thought this would be a normal-sized tractor, but made by Big Bud. No, still bigger than the T9 and the Challenger, and, of course, the Quad Track. The Quad Track's not really that big, really. Um, it's got tracks. That's, I think it just looks bigger because it's got tracks. But this thing is huge, and what a monstrous DLC. So thank you, Giants, for delivering this to us. Now, i got to admit, I wasn't very excited for it, but when it got a bit closer and I saw what we were getting, I got really excited, I'm so glad I bought it. Um, you can get this on Steam now. I did pay for this, just like the rest of you guys. I am not a media partner, so I really recommend you guys get it. But thank you very much for sticking with me through this, uh, through this video. So we had a first look at it at the same time, so this is just my first look at it. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider slapping that thumbs up button. It really does mean a lot and helps the channel grow. Hit subscribe to see more for myself. If you haven't seen me before, I do daily uploads or try and do daily uploads with a wheel cam. So make sure you check out the wheel cam. It's, you know, it's different. I think it's different. Uh, so yeah, hit subscribe to see more for myself. I've been Simulate Gaming and I'll see you in the next one.